welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video, we are going to be going over the new Hourglass palettes. These were released for holiday 2022. I have the elephant and the butterfly. I thought the tiger would be a little bit too dark. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If that sounds good to you, please give this video a thumbs up subscribe. I do upload videos twice a week on Sundays and Thursdays. And with all that out of the way, let's start talking about the details of these two palettes. So I was really excited for the palettes this year from Hourglass. There's a few reasons for that. The first one being that they came out with three palettes this year, and that's unusual for Hourglass. They're finally listening to their customers and coming out with more shade ranges to just complement a variety of skin tones. It's really great to see. And I picked up two of the three. So I have the Butterfly, which is for lighter skin tones. And then I have the Elephant. And that is gonna be more for medium, medium light, medium deep. And then you have the Tiger palette for deep skin tones. And then another thing that I just thought was really smart of Hourglass to do is if you order from their website, you can actually customize the palette that you want. So these do retail for $85. They are pretty pricey. Each pan comes with 1.4 grams of product and there's six pans in each palette. Going back to the packaging, if you just like the Tiger packaging, but you want the colors from the Elephant palette, you can actually swap them out and take the palette from the Elephant and put it in the tiger packaging. So I thought that was really smart of them to do and just give you even more options. I decided to stick with the butterfly and the elephant and just keep them how they were because I like both of these. I kind of just got really lucky because butterflies and elephants are both really special to me. I'm sure that they're fairly popular animals, but elephants are really special to me because it reminds me of my stepmom. She loves elephants. It reminds her of her son who had passed and it's something special between the two of us. And then butterflies remind me of my mom. My mom loves butterflies so much. So I figured I couldn't get one without the other. I have one for my mom, one for my stepmom. So that is why I chose both and they just happen to be able to fit my skin tone and that is why I kept them. Reading from the Hourglass website, these palettes are exclusive for holiday 2022. They come out with some sort of six pan palette every year. Featuring artwork by world-renowned illustrator Katie Scott, these six pan palettes are a celebration of the natural world including best-selling and brand new shades of blush, bronzer, highlighter, and finishing powder for a glowing complexion. As part of the Unlocked Collection, the limited edition palettes support Hourglass's mission to unlock the cages of wild animals in captivity. 5% of profits from the Unlocked support the non-human rights project in their efforts to secure fundamental rights for animals. Um, I don't know a lot about this project. I'll have to look more into it. I don't want to sound too negative because I find it really great that Hourglass is donating some of their profits to these organizations. However, for me, I just, I understand that this is part of a marketing tactic to just get people to buy their products more and showcase that because let's, Let's be honest, at the end of the day, for these big corporations, this is just a tax break. So I'm gonna try and overlook that. I would love to know more about the project. It would be really great if they had some sort of link or website to this project to direct people towards. I would have really appreciated that. So you can look more into the nonprofit yourself and just see if I wanted to maybe donate myself. I would have really liked to see that. But now let's just talk about the shades of each one. I'm gonna start with the Butterfly palette. So that has two finishing powders, two strobe powders, and two blushes. Three of those are new shades and three of them are existing shades, so half and half. In finishing powders, we have Ethereal Light and Diffused Light. Those are both existing shades. In strobe powders, we have Incandescent Light and Celestial Strobe Light. So Incandescent Light is existing while Celestial Strobe Light is new. And then for blush, both of these are new blush shades. So we have Soft Flush and we have Sunset Glow. Jumping out at me right away is that the Butterfly palette does not have a bronzer, which I would have really liked to see because then it's really an all-in-one palette 
The Elephant and the Tiger both have a bronzer shade, so it's just a little disappointing and something that I immediately noticed. Let's move on to the Elephant palette and talk about those shades. Going over the shades in the Elephant palette, so we have two finishing powders, one strobe powder, one bronzer, so that's the difference between the Butterfly palette, not including the shades, but there's only one strobe powder instead of two, and then a bronzer replacing the one, as well as two blushes. This also has more newer shades. In finishing powders, we have Dim Light and Soft Light. Both of these are existing shades that Hourglass already has. In the strobe powder, we have Beaming Strobe Light. That is a new shade. In bronzer, we have Lustrous Bronze Light. That is also a new shade. And for the blushes, again, same as the butterfly, both blushes are new. We have Iridescent Coral and Radiant Rose. So just to summarize, the Elephant palette has about 60% new shades, whereas the Hourglass has 50%. The Tiger palette, which I do not have, also has four shades that are newer out of six. So the Butterfly palette's the only one that has less newer shades. But that's a little bit of information on these two palettes. I'm going to zoom you in, apply both of these to my face at separate times. So first I'll be applying the butterfly palette and then next I'll be applying the elephant palette and I will be inserting in a ton of swatches. I have, I'm gonna expose myself here. I have a lot of hourglass and if you notice, some of these are still in boxes and that is because I haven't opened them. So I'm going to be having a lot of swatches comparing these to past Hourglass palettes, and then we'll be getting into my final thoughts. So with that, let's jump over to the clip of me applying the Butterfly palette to my face, followed by the Elephant palette. All right, so I have you zoomed in a little bit closer, but not too much closer. Let's just get started. I do have most of my makeup on, except for powder. So I kind of just stopped there, no complexion products, obviously, but I do have foundation, I do have concealer. I did set my concealer with my By Terry powder because I'm not gonna use a finishing powder on my under eyes, but that's just where I stopped and then I did brows and eyes. So let's do this, let's see. So here is what the Butterfly palette looks like. You have two finishing powders, two strobe powders, and two blushes. No bronzer, so I think I'm just gonna use what's in Shop My Stash for that. I considered doing the Elephant palette bronzer, but I really wanna get a feel of that one for on its own. And we'll just do one of these on half the face and then the other on the other half. So let's see here. We'll just keep it simple and follow top row, bottom row, finishing powder, strobe light, and blush on one side, finishing powder, blush, strobe light on the other side. Let's start with the top row on this side of my face. So the finishing powder is ethereal light, strobe powder is incandescent light, and then we have the blush as a soft flush. So let's see, I'm going to use my Sonia G I'm not sure what set this came in, but it has like the origami cranes on it. I love origami cranes, so that's why I just had to get this brush and the other brush you're gonna see here. We're just gonna start sweeping this gently across the face and just buffing it in just a little bit, a little bit more to half the forehead. It did kind of mattify a little bit. So here is this side of the face with Ethereal Light Finishing Powder. I'm just trying to compare it side to side here. It, I don't see too much of a difference. Clearly I powdered, pores still look okay. I think it looks really nice. It's definitely not too glittery. It's probably, I would say, very, very soft filter effect out of all the ambient lighting powders that I've tried, their finishing powders. I would say this one is the most subtle out of all of them. And then let's just do this whole side first. So I guess that means I need to bronze. Be right back. All right, so I have bronzer on here. I just used my bronzer from my Shop My Stash, which is the Charlotte Tilbury bronzer in medium, but I'll always have it listed below. Let's go into this blush. I'm gonna use my Sonia G cheek brush from the Lotus set. 
It looks a little dirty, but it's not. There's no product on here. It's clean. I'm gonna make sure this looks very bright. But Hourglass Cheek Products sometimes, let's just see. It says Soft Flush for the shade name, so I'm hoping that it's not too strong. I mean, let's see. Okay, so here's the blush. I think the blush looks airbrushed. It looks pretty flawless. I'm just gonna kind of tap over it a little bit. I'm really liking this blush. I like the tone of it. I think it's subtle enough, but it still packs a punch. This is really pretty so far. For the strobe powder in incandescent light, I'm going to be using my other Sonia G brush. This is the one that came with the Japanese cranes and we're gonna use that. This doesn't really look very pigmented. Like I kind of keep confusing it for a finishing powder. It doesn't even look like a highlight. I keep having to like double check the back and make sure that saying the right thing because this is very subtle. Hmm. Even like it gives a highlight for sure when the lights are directly on it, but this is a little bit too subtle for my taste. So at least this top row here is just coming across very subtle on the skin. So again, we have finishing powder, strobe light, and then the blush is doing this side. And I mean, the highlight barely looks like a highlight. And there's a time and place for that. Some people really want a more natural highlight, so I'm not knocking it. Just I would like maybe something a little bit more. But I have a feeling this other highlight is going to be even almost too strong. Let's do this side of the face with the bottom row and just see what that gives us. I'm gonna wipe the product and use the same brushes just so we kind of have even application as far as what we used. I'm gonna go into the finishing powder here. Finishing powder is diffused light and this is not new to the Hourglass website. Again, we're just gonna buff this into the skin. Just try and give like a really nice finishing filter to this. I don't know if you can tell because this has all the complexion products versus this side, but it's still very subtle. The shade is a little bit yellow, so it's making my foundation just you can see the difference, like how much more yellow this side looks versus this side. I definitely prefer the ethereal light. I think even though it's more subtle of a finishing powder, this side, just the tone, the shade doesn't really work for my skin. I think if you had strong yellow undertones, it would, but for me, I'm not really, I'm not really liking it on me but let's apply bronzer and then we'll get to blush. I'm not sure if you can see it on camera, but I use the same bronzer, the Charlotte Tilbury, and I feel like it's not showing up as much on this side as it did on this side. And I don't know if that's just because of the finishing powder, it just kind of made my skin just a little bit different, but let's keep going. This blush is Sunset Glow. All these blushes, every time like, I cleaned off this brush, like this looks a little bit scary. I'm gonna tap this off and just apply. And remember to trust the process more because now this looks pretty. I'll go over it and help it melt into the skin a little bit more. All right, so now you can get a good idea of each blush. This is Soft Flush, and then this is Sunset Glow. You can really see that this one just has more those sunset orangey tones, and this one's just a lot more subtle. I think I like the Soft Flush a little bit more. This is a little bit punchy for me. 
not bad. Like I would still wear it, but I'm not fully on the blush train yet. I feel like it's a little strong. This is definitely more my speed. Let's now try this metallic strobe light. So this strobe light is in the shade Celestial Strobe Light. And boy, you can really just tell a difference between this one, which is the metallic, and then this one, which is the other strobe light. Just, it is metallic. So I'm gonna just gently tap in there. Let's just see. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a lot stronger. I'm kind of getting like stripey vibes. And I'm using a pretty flimsy brush. It shouldn't really be leaving a stripe on my skin. Mm. I don't know, like I wish I had a mix between the two. I'm gonna actually, I'm just gonna mix them both and put them on both sides just so that way it kind of evens it out. And we'll probably do the same thing with the blush too, just so it evens both of these out. You can see what they look like mixed. Yeah, I like that much better because it took the really subtle highlight and just punched it up just a little bit. That's the kind of highlight I prefer. So in the future, when I use this palette, I'll just be mixing them. Now I'm gonna do the same with the blush. Start with this side, just do a little tiny bit to even it up. Hope that it doesn't get too out of control and clown-like. But the great thing about this is you just kind of go in it with both finishing powders, why not? And then you go over the blush and tone it down. All right, so this is the finished look, a little bit mixed on both sides now as far as shades go. Let me just put my glasses back on. This palette is definitely one where I don't like any of the shades by themselves. I for sure would just mix these two. I mix the two blushes and I mix the two highlights. I don't necessarily love them on their own. Out of all of them, I probably like the soft flush the most. So this is soft flush and then this is sunset glow. I just prefer the soft flush. This is a little bit punchy still for me and considering it's for the light skin tone. Mm. It's not bad, but I just, I prefer them mixed and I prefer the highlight mixed, finishing the outer mixed. This is not a palette that I would go out and purchase a full size of any of these shades because I don't like them on their own. I'm just gonna take these out and this is what we're looking like. So let's move on to applying the elephant palette. Here is what the packaging looks like. It's really pretty. It's all metal, which is different from their other holiday palettes. And I was a little surprised because the hinge, it feels like a little bit flimsy, but the magnetic is strong. Like it actually, it's because I was holding it. So let me do it this way. Like it just slams shut. I don't know. I just wanted to point that out because I haven't seen anyone talk about that. Here is what the palette looks like. So you have a finishing powder here, here, a highlighter, a metallic strobe cream here, two blushes, and then a bronzer. So I'm going to apply the finishing powders each on one side of my face. We'll do the same thing for blush. And then bronzer we can use all over the face as well as the strobe. Let's get started putting this on. I'm going to use for the finishing powder this Sonia G brush. It has the cranes on it. I'm not sure the exact name, but I'm a huge fan of Japanese cranes. So this is what I've been using for powder and I really enjoy it. The two finishing powders we have are dim light and soft light. So I'm gonna put dim light on this side of my face, soft light on this side, and let's just get started. I'm just gonna dip my brush in here. We're gonna sweep this gently, not too heavy handed. And I, I've been having trouble. I've never been able to find an hourglass powder 
that I like on my skin that's just not too powdery. A lot of the times I end up just mixing them. I think I just need to really look into it and spend some time because I don't like the ones that are really glittery. And so far, this doesn't seem to have too much glitter to it. So I am liking that. Here is what dim light's looking like. Right now this has no powder and then you can see with dim light, I just realized a little bit ago, I didn't put mascara on, but that's okay. We'll put it on at the end. So oh, it did give a nice sheen. I do like this color. I don't remember the one that I had before that I recently decluttered, but that one had glitter in it. This one doesn't seem to have glitter. It just gives like a nice soft filtered finish. So let's now try soft light. Just wipe my brush off so that way it's kind of clean off of product. And then let's go in with soft light. Again, just lightly, lightly sweeping this. Soft light in the palette is a lot lighter in tone than dim light. So we'll see if it makes my face look uneven. And then here's what soft light's looking like. I don't know if you can tell in the camera, this is pulling a little bit darker. This is just a little bit lighter, looking more like my natural skin. I do prefer the soft light over the dim light, which is kind of surprising. It's not that here's dim light, here's soft light, just as a refresher. It's not that this is like dark, like the bronzer is just darkening my foundation just a little bit. And everything that I have on my face is listed down in the description box below, but I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to explain, but I really, I'm actually really enjoying the soft light. I'm just eating my words now that I just complained about how I've never been able to find a finishing powder, but I really like how this looks. It just looks like soft and filtered, whereas this one just looks a little bit more heavy. Let's move on to bronzer. So the bronzer is the shade Lustrous Bronze Light. I dip my brush in here. I'm using a Morphe M530. And let's just kind of go in. I do really like just more light buildable products. I'm not a makeup pro by any means. So for me, if it's just buildable, it's easier for me to apply. The forehead a little. All right, here is the bronzer. It's, hmm. it blended really well. It's just a little bit glowy for me, which is to be expected. It actually looks really nice and natural on the skin. There's just a little spot here that kind of won't blend out. I'm gonna just take my powder brush and just kind of go over that a little bit. I do like this. It looks really natural. It looks luminous. It's just not something I gravitate towards. So I'm kind of just a little bit hesitant on how much I like it. Like, I think it looks nice, but I'm not used to seeing myself this way. So it's a little bit off-putting, but I do think my makeup looks really nice so far. I think it looks really smooth and blendable. I'm really enjoying this palette so far. So let's move on to blush. The two blushes is iridescent coral and radiant rose so iridescent coral is this middle one here and then radiant rose is here so we're going to do one on each cheek i guess let's just start with the coral in the middle i'm going to be using my sonia g cheek brush and we'll just we'll flip it over let's go in with coral I just tap off the excess here and let's go in Okay, I was nervous at first that this was gonna be really bright, but it's giving a nice wash of color. Again, with the sheen, it's just a lot of glowy on glowy. I don't know if I would necessarily reach for this palette all in one because I kind of like to mix up my products. Like if I'm gonna use a matte bronzer, I would use a glowy blush. I don't know if I would use a glowy bronzer, a glowy blush, a glowy highlight. Like that's just not something I, typically go for. I prefer a little bit more balance, 
However, this is really pretty. I wasn't expecting to like this shade so much. In the pan, it was a little bit scary, but this looks really nice. Now I'm gonna flip this brush over, clean it off a little bit, and we're gonna go into Radiant Rose on this side. This one <laughs> looks like this. It's gonna be, trust the process, trust the process. All right, I think I went a little bit more heavy handed on this side um, compared to this side. So turn this over. Here's what Radiant Rose looks like. It's funny because I was really nervous about this one just based in the pan, but the rose one's the one that is just a lot more pigmented. It's a lot of blush for me. I know blush is like a really big trend right now, but I'm still getting used to that. And then just now that you've seen both colors, again, this is Iridescent Coral. This is Radiant Rose. The Radiant Rose, now that I've powdered it down, looks a lot better. I'm gonna just kind of put my brush between the two and just even it out a little, just so the two sides of my face match a little bit more. All right, so I kind of just mixed the two blushes on both sides of my face just to even it out. I really just wanted to see what the colors look like on their own, but I kind of do like them just mixed. And my face is still looking filtered, but I don't know, it's a lot of blush for me. Let's move on to highlight. So fun fact, I actually have never tried the strobe lights from Hourglass. Everyone always talks about them. I just haven't gotten around to it, but that's this shade here. So this is in the shade Beaming. We're gonna just try that. I've been using this brush for highlight and I really like it. Again, this is from the Sonia G Crane set. It came with these two brushes here and it kind of just gives like a more diffused highlight. It's a very just kind of wispy brush, but smaller. I've been liking that look a little bit more. So that's what I'm gonna do, especially if this is very strong. Without my glasses, it's sometimes hard for me to see the highlight because you're kind of have to hit it just right with the light. And especially on this side of my face, my eyes are worse. So that's why this brow is always messed up more. A hard time looking this way. My vision doesn't go that far. Probably less blinding than I was expecting. And I don't know if that's because I have a glowy bronzer or a glowy blush and now just highlight on top. Maybe if I was wearing more of a matte blush, I notice it more. It's kind of just all melding together. And that is not a con for me. I actually quite like that. It's really just giving like a nice, perfect highlight for me. I am still into highlight. I know the trend is less highlight, more blush. I'm a creature of habit, so I am not able to move on just yet. Once the trend is over, I'll probably be into that. But for now, I'm just going to stick to what I like on my face. But here is the highlight, and I think it looks really pretty. My whole face. I feel like there's a distinct just difference. Like this side of my face looks lighter, and this side looks a little bit darker from the finishing powder. But I, once I get past that, I think the rest looks really pretty. So that's all the products using the Elephant Palette. I hope those swatches and comparisons were helpful for you. Let's go over my final thoughts on these two palettes here. First things first, I really wanna give it to Katie Scott. I think the packaging on this is just stunning. Had 
they not done something so out of the box like this, I probably would not have purchased these palettes. I kind of went into holiday telling myself I wasn't going to purchase these palettes. The packaging is absolutely what sold me. I have enough of these hourglass palettes to last me the rest of my life. I still, I even have the first one here. This is the very first one. You can see how much I've used it. I still have quite a bit of product. So clearly I did not need another one, but I just had to do it with the elephant and the butterfly. I think it's absolutely stunning. If you don't have a lot of hourglass palettes, I do just wanna point out one thing about the packaging that I personally wasn't expecting, and that is that these are metal. So they do, I showed this in my application, but they're metal tins and then they really snap shut with the magnet. And so if you were to lay your palettes up like this or anywhere near each other, they kind of, you know, typical magnet thing, like they stick. So there's some force there holding these together. These two also are metal and that's my fault. I had all these palettes just sitting in boxes not being used. If this is your first video you're watching of mine, I did move away from the US in 2018. So I left the US. I've traveled quite a bit in that time. I lived in the Philippines for two years. I lived in Cyprus for two years. And when you live on an island, both of those are islands, you can only bring what's in your suitcase. I can't just pack everything in a moving truck and drive to the next place. I'm really limited on space. So because of that, my makeup purchasing habits did not stop. I just had sent them to my sisters. And then recently, now that I'm in France, a little bit more established, I kind of, you know, like have my setup here, just not my own place just yet, but we're working on it. So now I can finally have some of my things. So that explains why I just have all these things in boxes. These I think were last year's because there were two Back to packaging, these are also metal. I just wasn't expecting that because it's my first time seeing them. So if you didn't get last year's and you've gotten other ones, I was just expecting more of this packaging, which is plastic and clicks shut. So something to just note is that these have magnetic closures and they're metal. If that doesn't bother you, it's fine. It doesn't necessarily bother me, but the fact that they kind of stick together does. Moving on, if, if I had to go back and reevaluate my purchase, I don't think I would have purchased the butterfly. I would only purchase the elephant. I think that the elephant just fits a lot of skin tones. I consider myself right on the edge of a light skin tone and this is bordering too light for me. It has nice shades. Just, you can clearly see the difference between the elephant and the butterfly. And I just feel like even though these blushes are lighter than, for example, this one, on the cheeks, it's so much more vibrant and just packs more of a punch. The finishing shades in the highlight are really just what do it for me. I just, I don't like these as much. My favorite, Finishing powder out of the two is this middle one here. This is Soft Light. So even though it's not new, that is my favorite one. This one doesn't have that. Also, what really just kicks this one down for me is that it doesn't have a bronzer. I really wish instead of two strobing powders, they put one bronzer, one strobing powder, similar to how this one is, where it has two finishing powders, a strobing powder, a bronzer and two blushes. I think this is the perfect combination. I know that the Tiger one also has a bronzer. So I feel like this one was almost just an afterthought. They figured, you know, they've done two in the past. They really wanted to bump it up to three, show people that they were trying to be more inclusive. So they made a third one, but this is the only one of the three that only has three new shades instead of four. I wish that they had done a new bronzer shade. That would have probably enticed me to want to keep this more. The elephant one is just a clear winner. Again, I just, I really love this finishing powder. It's a staple. I think I have it in two of these other palettes. Yeah, so I have it in the Lighting Unlocked, this one. 
And then I have it in the Ambient Lighting Palette Volume 2, which is one of these long guys here. So Soft Light's clearly very popular. These four shades, sorry, these four shades are the new shades. This blush is probably my favorite out of the two. And I really like this bronzer. I think it's really pretty. It's maybe a little bit light for medium skin tones. So they could have done a little bit more depth with that. They probably should have put this in the butterfly palette and then more of an in-between of the tiger and this one bronzer in this palette. That would have been perfect. Hourglass, call me. I'm willing to be on your branding team. But that just, I think, would have made this a 10 out of 10. But I still give these, you know, an eight, an eight and a half. These are great palettes. Hourglass always knocks it out of the park. It's just, if you already have other Hourglass palettes, unless you're a collector, unless you just love the packaging like I do, you don't necessarily need these just for the new shades. So that's all I'm gonna say about these two palettes. I'm just gonna keep it really brief here. If you bought these, if you bought the Tiger one, please let me know in the comments your thoughts. I always love hearing everyone's thoughts and opinions on everything. And with that, I will see you all in my next video. Bye everyone.